code execution tracking where power side channel. It is presented by uh, Yuan, uh, Yuan, Yan Nan Liu from uh, the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Let's welcome the speaker. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Today, I'm glad to introduce our work on code execution tracking via power side channel. Sorry, it doesn't work. <laughs> <Side chat>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, yes, thank you. Sorry, sorry. Today, embedded systems are widely used in people's daily life, such as automatic driving, robot control, and smart meters. With the proliferation of embedded systems, there is more and more interest in protecting and attacking the core of embedded system. That is the microcontroller unit. For example, to protect data processed by microcontroller unit, designer would deploy cryptographic algorithm on MCU. Hence, some attackers propose key extraction attack to recover the key from the cryptographic algorithm. To launch this attack, attacker need first locate the moment when vulnerable code section is executed. Then attacker can recover the key by injecting faults into the processor at this moment or monitor its set channel. However, how to locate the vulnerable code section is usually ignored during designing previous key extraction attacks. They mainly focus on finding more vulnerable code sections by analyzing the algorithm. To locate a vulnerable code section, one simple idea is to recover the instruction flow during execution. There are also some other attackers try to hijack the execution flow of MCU to implement malicious functions, such as code injection attack and a firmware modification attack. CF, hence, CFI control flow integrity is proposed as a countermeasure for such control flow hijacking attack. CFI also need to monitor the actual instruction flow during execution. However, instead of locating the code sections, it intends to detect any abnormal execution that deviates from the control flow graph. For example, some CFI techniques monitor the instruction flow by checking whether the destination of every branch instruction is valid. So if we use execution tracking to represent the ability of, of, of tracking the instruction flow during execution, then it is the basis of both key extraction attack and the control flow integrity. However, we found there is no appropriate code execution tracking method for MCU. On the one hand, how to locate a vulnerable code section is usually ignored during designing previous method. And for MCU, existing CFI techniques usually impose an affordable cost to track the execution. For example, some CFI technique use additional code to monitor the control transfer, and some CFI technique use dedicated hardware module and special instruction tabs to track the execution. Because embedded system and MCU usually have limited resources, either software modification or hardware modification would introduce non-trivial overhead. Especially, there are many legacy systems where you can't modify them. To solve this problem, in this work, we propose execution tracking where power set channel. The power set channel reflects the power consumption of MCU during code execution. Because different instructions tend to generate different power consumption traces, hence the power trace leaks information about the instruction being executed. At the same time, Monitoring power side channel requires no modification on the software or hardware inside the MCU. However, such solution is also challenging because power side channel is sometimes noisy and it's difficult to extract useful information from it. For example, when previous work tried to recover the tap of the executed instruction via power side channel, only achieved 60% accuracy in the best case. With above, we formulate two problems to solve in this work. First, 
Motivated by the key tracing attacks, we formulate a normal execution tracking problem. We use an instruction instance to indicate a specific instruction in the code together with its machine code and the PC value. Then for given code and the power trace, we want to answer which instruction instance in the code is being executed at a given moment. Next, motivated by the CFI technique, we formulate a abnormal execution tracking problem. In this problem, we want to answer whether the actual execution flow include abnormal execution that deviates from the control flow graph. In this work, we solve both of these two problems based on hidden Markov model. When hidden Markov model consists of three parts, the first part is a state machine. The state transition here is a Markov process, which is invisible. During state transition, its hidden state can generate visible observation with a certain probability distribution. We call this probability distributions emission distribution. Hence, the visible observation leaks information about the hidden state. For a given observation sequence, we can recover the most probable state sequence. Motivated by this, we can model the code execution on MCU as the state machine part in HMM. Model its power side channel behavior as the observation part in HMM. With such HMM design, for a given power trace, we can recover the most probable instruction sequence. This sequence answers the normal execution tracking problem, problem directly. To answer a normal execution tracking problem, we propose to check the likelihood of the reported instructions in the reported sequence because we found abnormal execution would decrease this likelihood compared to normal execution case. Hence, the HMM is the core of our framework. To track execution efficiently and accurately, we need to design the HMM carefully. Next, let's first introduce our state machine design. To locate the instruction instance, one naive state definition would treat every instruction instance in the code as an individual state. However, this leads to high computational cost. To recover the most probable state sequence, the space complexity is proportional to the observation sequence length times the state number. The time complexity can be divided in two parts. The, past, the first part is the cost of evaluating the probability for each state and its observation in the sequence. The second part is the cost of enumerating previous states for each state at each moment. Due to the large instruction count in common code, such naive design leads to high, huge state number, which further leads to high cost. To alleviate this problem, we seek to reduce the state number. For a given code, it can be equivalently represented by its control flow graph. Each edge in the graph represents a valid control transfer. Each node represents a basic block. One basic block is an instruction sequence with only single entry point and a single exit point. So instructions inside one basic block are always executed in the same order. In this way, we can treat one basic block as a state in HMM because if we can recover the transition among basic blocks, we can also recover the instruction sequence. In this way, we can significantly reduce the state number. However, because different basic blocks usually have different instruction counts, hence the state in our case have n equal lenses. This makes classic HMM unusable and we need to revise it. To use HMM, we need to first convert a power trace into observation sequence. To be specific, we need to divide the power trace into chunks where each trunk corresponds to one unknown state. When state have equal length, such partition is trivial. However, when state have unequal lenses, it means the length of the underlying unknown state is also unknown, then the partition is non-trivial. To avoid, to avoid the dividing power trace for states, we can define observation symbol for single instruction. In this case, we only need to divide the power trace for instructions instead of the entire state, which is straightforward. In HMM, 
we usually use VTB algorithm to recover the most probable state of sequence for a given observation sequence. To handle unequal length states, we also need to revise the VTB algorithm. VTB algorithm defines a quantity m for each state at each moment, and we can use an array to record all the m values. The m value for, for state si at moment t represents the maximal probability of the state sequence given the observation if the state sequence terminates with state SI at moment T. In classic HMM, because all states have less one, hence when updating the M values at the same moment, we only need the M values at the previous moment. However, because states may have different lenses in our case, when update M value at the same moment, we may, different states may depend on M value at a different previous moments. Also, because the state may be longer than Y, it means the observation sequence may terminate in the middle of the last state in the corresponding state of sequence. So we also need to consider such cases during VTB calculation. By solving about two problems, we are able to handle the unequal length states. We compare the complexity of our method by comparing it with the naive design. Suppose the observation sequence length is T, instruction count is I, and the basic block count is B. Because our method have fewer states, hence the array used to record the M value is smaller, and we can reduce the space complexity. Our method can also reduce the time complexity. First, because both methods define observation symbol for single instruction, so the total cost of evaluating the probability for state for given observation are the same. But because our method have fewer states, so the cost of enumerating previous states is smaller. Next, let's introduce our emission distribution design and the observation symbol design. Because we define observation symbol for single instruction, it means we need to assign an emission distribution function for each instruction. However, directly modeling, modeling an individual emission distribution function for each instruction has several drawbacks. First, it has high cost due to the large instruction count. It also has low flexibility because if the target program is changed, we need to rebuild the, the emission distribution function. To implement different functions, different basic blocks tend to have different type of sequences. So if we can accurately recover the instruction type via power set channel, we should also have high probability to recover the underlying basic blocks. Motivated by this, we propose to model emission distribution function for instruction type, and the instruction instance of the same type use the same emission distribution function. In this way, we can reduce the cost and increase the flexibility. However, to, re to recognize the instruction type via power side channel, directly using the, the raw power consumption trace as the observation symbol is not a, good, not a good choice because it is noisy. The power consumption trace for single instruction execution usually affected by four factors. The type factor would affect underlying processor's micro operation. The operand and the instruction in previous would affect, would affect the underlying switching activity. The environmental noise would also affect the power trace obtained. Hence, to recognize the instruction type, we should mitigate the inference from all the other three factors. To achieve this, we use frequency domain analysis. From the view of frequency domain, the power trace is synthesized by different frequency components. Intuitively, frequency components would correlate to the four factors differently. For example, the temp factor usually determines hardware uses in large scale, such as whether the memory unit is accessed. Such operations tend to have low frequency. The operand usually determines underlying transistor switching activity during calculation, and such operations tend to have higher frequency. Motivated by this, during design of our observation symbol, we should use frequency components that are highly correlated to the type factor. Motivated by this, we propose our signal extraction technique. 
we represent the amplitude of, uh, of a frequency component as the linear combination of four independent terms, where each term corresponds to one factor. Then we use Pearson correlation coefficient to evaluate the correlation between the, the frequency component and the type factor. This value can be evaluated with the, D type, the A types variance and the A components variance, and these values can be further estimated by sampling. With above, during design our observation symbol, we prefer frequency components with following two characteristics. First, it should have larger D type over D component ratio, which means higher correlation. We also prefer frequency components with a larger D type value, which means if A type variance is large, it means different instruction types, so more significant difference on this frequency component. So they are easier to be distinguished. With above, we have finished our HMM design and we are able to answer the normal execution tracking problem. To answer a normal execution tracking problem, we propose to check the likelihood of reported instructions. When the execution is abnormal, the actual instruction sequence must deviate from the control flow graph. However, HMM can only report instruction sequence that obeys the CFD. This is because if one instruction sequence contains any invalid transition, it always has zero probability during V2B calculation. So if execution is abnormal, it means there must be some observation generated by actual instruction execution is incorrectly recognized as a wrong instruction in the reported sequence. Ideally, when execution is normal, all the observations should be correctly recognized because different instructions tend to generate different observations. So the probability of the reported instruction B generate a wrong observation M should be smaller than the probability of B generate observation N. This probability also represents the likelihood of the reported instructions, which can be estimated with the emission distribution function. Hence, due to the incorrect recognition, abnormal execution would decrease the likelihood of some reported instructions compared to the normal execution case. Motivated by this, we propose calibrated the likelihood for abnormal execution tracking. We first sample each instruction's average likelihood during normal execution. During detection, we can check each reported instruction's calibrated likelihood, which is the difference between its current likelihood and the average likelihood in normal execution case. When execution is normal, all the reported, likelihood, reported instructions calibrated likelihood should be distributed around zero. When execution is abnormal due to the incorrect recognition, there must be some reported instructions calibrated likelihood are best to be negative. In this way, we can distinguish the normal execution case and the abnormal execution case. We evaluate our method with a uh, folding setup. We use 8051MCU as the target platform with our widely used in embedded system. It has 152 instruction types, and the clock frequency is about 11 megahertz. We use an oscilloscope to obtain the power trace by measuring the voltage drop between the VCCP and the power supply. The sample rate is about 1.25 giga sample per second. We consider four HMM configurations in the experiment, including two state design. One is treat basic block as state, we use BB for short, and the other use instruction tab as a state in HM, we use tab for short. We also consider two observation symbol design. One is designed with our signal extraction technique, the other is not. We first test normal execution tracking case. Here we saw the accuracy of recovering the tab of the executed instruction. The result so, Configuration with our BB model can outperform configuration with TAP model significantly. This is because the using basic block as state can preserve more instruction transition knowledge from the control flow graph. Hence, we can also recover the instruction TAP more accurately. 
we also observe configuration with signal extraction technique can also outperform other configurations in most cases. This demonstrates our signal extraction technique can significantly reduce the noise in power set channel, hence facilitate recognizing instruction type. Then we show the accuracy of recovering the instruction instance, which can only be answered with our BB model. The results of, by using basic block as state and the signal extraction technique, our method can achieve very high accuracy in recovering the instruction instance. This also demonstrates that by modeling emission distribution function for instruction type, we can also accurately recover the instruction instance. Next, we test abnormal execution tracking, where we simulate firmware modification attack on AS algorithm. We first simulate a single instruction modification case, where we replace, insert, or delete one instruction from the original program. We also simulate a multi-instruction modification case, where we replace the original AES program with another one during calculation. This figure shows the calibrated likelihood of the reported instruction sequence in normal execution case. We can see the calibrated likelihood for most reported instructions are very close to zero. We also observe some value deviates from zero a lot, as indicated by the, by the green circles. In fact, all these value correspond to the same reported instruction instance, and their mean is still around zero. One possible reason for this phenomenon is that most instructions on our platform use a 8-bit resist, but this instruction indicated by green circle use a 16-bit resistor. So it may be more sensitive to the operand factor, and it observation value varies a lot. In single instruction replacement case, we observe the calibrated likelihood of the replaced instruction indicated by the blue crosses are uh, bias to be negative. This is because all the replaced instructions are incorrectly recognized. In single instruction, uh, in certain case, we observe the calibrated likelihood of the instruction around the inserted instruction indicated by the blue lines are bias to be negative. This is because the inserted instruction may cause the instruction around it mismatch during VTB calculation. Hence, these instructions are incorrectly recognized. The deletion case is similar to the insertion case. At last, in multi-instruction modification case, we observe the calibra calibrated likelihood for most reported instructions are bad to be negative. This is the likelihood degradation here is more significant compared to the single instruction modification case. This is consistent with the intuition that if attack modify more instructions, then it is easier to be captured. With above, we saw abnormal execution would decrease the likelihood compared to the normal execution case, as our framework and the calibrated likelihood provide a good basis for future side channel based CFI method. As a conclusion, in this work, we propose a power set channel based code execution tracking framework. To track execution efficiently, we revise classic HMM. To reduce the noise in power set channel, we propose a signal extraction technique. To detect abnormal execution based on HMM, we propose calibrated likelihood. We evaluate our method with practical hardware setup, and the result so our method can achieve high accuracy in locating the instruction instance, and it is also efficient in detecting abnormal execution since single instruction can be captured, single instruction modification can be captured. Uh, there are also some future works to do. First, in this work, we focus on the power consumption of MCU calculation and ignore the peripheral IO events. In fact, the IO events would decrease the likelihood of the, the correlation between the power trace and the executed instruction. Hence, it may decrease the accuracy of our method. Another problem is that when interrupt is enabled, there is a valid control transfer from every instruction in the code to the interrupt handler function. It means every instruction instance become a basic block. 
So the efficiency of our method in this case is the same as the naive one. Oh, thank you. Any questions from the audience? I'm Kangxin from the University of Michigan. It's a nice piece of work. Uh, I have a couple of questions for you. Actually, the uh, power consumption may depend on also conditional branches in the block of the code and also actual the data value. Did you look at those uh, variations as well? Uh, during design, our observation symbol we were considered operating as a random change. Yes. So the, uh, what you're saying is you change the input data randomly, and how many you know, the uh, random data generation sets did you use for your evaluation? Uh, uh, during, during our design, we, uh, we consider the, the operator is unknown. So, uh, okay, okay. So during, uh, when we design our observation symbol and the modeling the emission distribution function, we suppose the operand is random, randomly changed. So we, we don't consider it is known and it's, it's not a given. OK, OK. You mentioned that the environment could have an impact on the power consumption. Uh, is that something you can actually take advantage of? If you know what the power consumption is expected to be, can you make observations about the environment? Uh, you mean if the environment parameter you change, whether the accuracy of our method will change? Uh, no, the opposite. So I don't know exactly what you mean by environment, maybe heat or humidity. But if you know what you're uh, expecting the power used to be, and that is different, and you think it's because of the environment, can you make inferences about the environment? Uh, oh, in first, in this work, I, I, I mean environment noise, I mean the, the white noise, the Gaussian noise. So, so such noise would affect the uh, set channel and it would affect the accuracy. But we use uh, signal extraction technique to filter this noise. And uh, uh, I, I didn't uh, get the second. Uh, let me simplify the question. Mm. What is causing that environmental noise? Uh, This may be complicated because if you use your auxiliary scope to measure the power consumption, there will be noise on your power trace. So this is the noise, the source of the noise in our code. When, when, when source of the noise in our code? Hi, uh, Daniel Genkin from UPenn and UMD. Uh, some processors, I mean, presumably more complex than the one you were looking, have out of order execution and all sorts of optimizations that are not repeatable between executions, between basic blocks. Have you looked at what happens in that case? Uh, sorry, can I repeat your question? So you, your approach was to look at each state is one basic block, yes. and you assume that instructions are executed in order as they're written in the code. Uh, uh, the, the instructions in the basic block are executed in the same order. But sometimes processors change order of execution based on pipelines, and on other uh, oh, okay, okay. that happened in runtime inside the process. Oh, yeah. oh. What would happen in that case? Oh. First, in this work, the, the platform user didn't uh, involve a pipeline, so, we, so we, we don't need to consider this case. But if there is a pipeline and the, the, code, the order of the code may change the, due to the hardware dynamic strategy, such as flashing the pipeline, and uh, maybe we need to co co cooperate that case during design our state machine. But uh, in, in, make, make our current version of the machine would, wouldn't uh, cooperate in that, co that situation. Okay, thank you. Other questions? If no other questions, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.